So for vocals, what you want to be mindful of is you want to know the microphone that you're using. You want to use the right type for your room, and you want to know the frequency response of that microphone. So you might know uh, where to look for EQ-wise if there's any issues with that particular singer. It can help take some of the guesswork out. So we love condenser microphones. The KMS-105 by Neumann is probably the best microphone out there. The DPA de facto is really good. And the Sennheiser, uh, I think it's the 965. We were using the 965 for a while. It's a super cardioid condenser, and it sounds really open and really nice. The problem with it is we're on a small stage, a really small stage. Um, in fact, it's 15 feet out from the wall. It's super, super small. And having three vocalists on condensers with a drummer in a band whose sound is like this, it can kind of wash out the whole mix, and the bleed can sometimes be a little unbearable especially if a singer is being really quiet. So uh, we use a dynamic mic because it's the best mic for this room and for the sound that we're going for. We use the SEV7. Uh, if you haven't used that mic and you are on dynamic mics, I highly recommend it. It has the frequency response of a large diaphragm condenser to some extent. So on a vocalist, some of the points on the SE are there's a huge proximity effect, which is fantastic, unless it's not, and 2K. There's this 2K bump in the microphone. And so I know for this particular singer, this kind of upper mid 2, 3, 4K area on certain vowels, only certain vowels, can spike. And so I know that the microphone we use accentuates that. So I'm cutting a little bit of that just to kind of help with that. And then a little bit of 450 hertz, kind of at a a broad uh, cut because we have great singers who eat their microphone and really give me what I need at front of house, which is really awesome. So I have a lot of buildup there that I need to remove, but I can get a very clear vocal that way. So I'm also doing a little bit of a cut at 171. So that's my vocal EQ. You're usually just shaping and taking away as much as you can take away from the microphone without it sounding not full or unnatural, and you're trying to watch out for any frequencies that might hurt. I also have a little bit of a high frequency boost at uh, 15K, just to give it a little bit of air on top, uh, because the air on that microphone sounds really great. So here is what uh, that microphone sounds like with no EQ, completely raw, and Landon's going to love me for this. He's the guy who was singing. And I will leave the auto-tune on for him. Holy Spirit fire, you're our one desire. Holy Spirit fire, you're our one desire. Holy so it actually sounds really, really great because he's a great singer. It's a great microphone and he's using really great mic technique, so it helps us out. There's almost nothing wrong with that sound, but we need to fit that sound with this mix. So here's that same mic, just with the EQ on it. Holy Spirit fire, your own desire. So it's a lot brighter, it's a lot crisper, the intelligibility is there. It's really pleasing to listen to. And none of the like the low end buildup is there either. So from there, we hit SoundGrid. I use Wavestune uh, in SoundGrid because we are using our front of house mix as our broadcast mix. So I want to tune those vocals and get them sounding great online. And the benefit of it is it sounds great in the room too. And I highly recommend tuning your vocals. Once you tune your vocals and you get it working right, you will never go back. Your singers will love it also. From there, because this is alter time, I use this plugin called PSE, Primary Source Expander. I use it on every microphone, and it is essentially a gate that's kind of tuned to vocals. So this is without it. Listen to all the drum bleed. Here's with it. It just trims down the bleed about 6 dB in between phrases. And I use that only when they're at the altar uh, because our stage is only 15 feet. So every time we have altar time and passers up at the end, 
all our vocalists grab their mic, shuffle back, and they're almost right up against the drum kit. And so the cymbal blade is almost twice as loud in everybody's mics just at the end of service. So that's a nice little tool that helps me tame a little bit of that on all the mics. I don't use it during the regular set because I find it easier to work around the bleed on the dynamic mics and have a very open sound where I can hear everything everybody's saying. Uh, harmonies come through a lot clearer, stuff like that. And it takes a little bit of the high end off, and I actually don't like what it does tonally in that regard. I like the high end of the V7, and I want to keep as much of it as I can. So from that, we go into Arvox, which does about 6 dB of compression. Sounds like this. Here's without it. With it. Just makes the vocals sound really pro without me having to do anything. You hear that nice little auto-tune artifact? And from there, I go into the CLA-3A, just for a little bit of compression on the loudest, loudest phrases. Um, see, it did a maximum of 3 dB of compression, and it also soothes that upper mid-range, just like we did on the guitars, just like we did um, on some of the other instruments, just to soothe that area. We are using a JBL VRX PA, the 928 series, which is a decent sounding box, but it does have a very pronounced upper mid-range. A lot of the JBL boxes do. And so one of the ways that I can smooth sources out on that PA is with the LA-3A. I don't have to EQ it out because I need it, but I can smooth it out, which is really nice. So here's the LA-3A out. Here's it in. Your own desire. Holy Spirit fire. Oh, I want desire. So it really smooths it out and makes the whole, it kind of fattens it up and it brings forward that mid range, makes it sound a lot warmer, which is really nice. The last two plugins I use are kind of in the moment, they're always changing a little bit, they're problem solving. It's a multi band compressor called the C6. This is probably Wave's most popular plugin. And I can use this to control each individual frequency band of the vocal. Uh, so if he backs away from his mic and he's belting a note and it's a vowel that happens to get harsh, sometimes that can get even harsher because of that proximity effect not being there. This will take care of that. If it sees that there's lots of upper mid-range, it'll compress the upper mid-range. And say like you go to a verse, like Glorious Day, where it's super, super low, this will take care of that because it'll compress the low end when all of a sudden it got twice as loud just for that section, which is really, really helpful because then I don't have to sit here and automate the EQ and I can just mix and this kind of does it for me. So here's without C6. Holy Spirit fire, here's with C6. Your own desire, Holy Spirit fire. I'm able to keep all the intelligibility of what the LA-3A added by bringing the mids forward, but cut all of the upper mid-range every time it comes forward, so the tone remains very consistent. Lastly, I use the RDSer to just tame any sibilance that's left in the vocal. It's the last thing in the chain, and you'll hear on things like desire, any Ds, Ts, Ss, Ks, any syllables like that. It'll just duck them a little bit so that they're a little smoother through a big sound system. Here's it in. Just really helps it be smooth and non-offensive to your ears through a loud sound system. For background singers, I usually will just cut a little bit more low end out and DS them a lot more aggressively so that you don't hear multiple S's coming at you at multiple times. A lot of times background singers and lead singers, they won't sing exactly the same timing of words. So a really easy way to solve that is to just DS the background vocals so that all that high end intelligibility is just gone. And there's kind of this mid range intelligibility, which makes them seem like they're farther back with less low end and less high end. So that's the vocal chain for every microphone input.